Hey everyone, Professor Snart checking in here. Just a quick hello on Monday morning, June 18th. So we are, um, we've just finished up the unit on that sort of gets us into some of the nonfiction writing, which is the This I Believe essay. Um, and uh, uh, kind of an interesting, you know, um, writing exercise or experiment, especially because you're writing in this style or following the sort of model that um, has a really long precedent and there's lots of examples to follow. So there's lots of interesting work done there. But of course, we're really focused now on our uh, next workshop where you are um, submitting some of your work within your peer group than your nonfiction work. And obviously, as you're writing this and probably um, even before so, the whole notion of kind of creative nonfiction is pretty challenging because it, it forces us to think about what is true in our writing, what is not true, um, how we can present things that are factually correct, but maybe in ways that they take on more symbolic significance, and what can you change or how much before it becomes fiction versus creative nonfiction. Um, and those are all interesting questions, but I really don't want us to get too hung up in trying to define them so perfectly that something, a piece of writing, would so obviously fall into one category versus the other. Um, so if you feel like you're kind of bordering on fiction a little bit, that's okay. First of all, it's almost um, hard not to feel that way. And uh, what you don't want to do is really get stuck um, kind of backing away from the writing, thinking, oh, I need to make this less fiction and more non-fiction, or vice versa, you know. Um, so not to get too wound up, in trying to uh, subscribe to a, a set kind of genre that you're working in. Now, obviously, working in creative nonfiction means that you're not writing about things that are fantastical or simply not true. <clears throat> um, you know, the sort of sci-fi approach. So there's obvious differences that you're going to run across there. But in terms of writing to bring um, symbolic or metaphoric or allegorical import to things to make it something more than just the surface retelling of I did this, then I did this, then this happened. To make it more than that, you're obviously working with language um, in a way that, again, feels like you're writing fiction, like you're sort of making things more than what they actually were, which sounds like you're sort of tricking the reader, but it's actually not, it, it's not the case, or it's always the case that that's what's happening. And so it's nothing to be concerned about. So um, while we are trying to think about creative nonfiction as, as different in many ways from fiction or from poetry or from other genres, um, it's not something that I want us to get so hung up on that it really sort of paralyzes the writing that you're trying to do. Okay. So we do get into our next workshop. Obviously, make sure you're finding yourself in your group and you can get to your discussion board to post um, materials correctly as a file for your other group members to get at. And then... Just a little heads up on the due dates. A reminder for our fiction or our workshops, we have the sort of double due date going on. By um, Tuesday, June 19th, which is tomorrow, um, depending on when you're watching this, you've posted your work. And then by Thursday, June 21st, towards the end of this week, you've gone in and then provided really substantial feedback to everybody within your group who posted on time. If someone posts late, it's sort of up to you about whether you want to provide um, feedback or not. Um, and so for sure this time, um, since we've now been through the workshop at least once before, um, obviously, again, that golden rule, you as the writer want to get really substantial and useful feedback on the work that you're doing. And that means being generous with the feedback that you give to people, particularly in terms of being as specific and direct as possible. So really literally cutting and pasting from the work that you're reading into your responses. So people really know, especially if you're trying to provide um, feedback about areas that you think could use improvement or that could be strengthened. They might already actually be working well, but you can still point to areas that could be improved. It is obviously most helpful for the, the writer to get feedback that identifies area for improvement, but does so in specific enough a way that the writer can then, you know, uh, understand where to go in the piece to make it stronger. It's not just that diction should be stronger or uh, 
images should be stronger. Make sure you really point the reader to precisely where those things could be occurring. Okay, so have fun with our next workshop, and um, as always, be in touch with me if you have any questions or concerns that come up.